Hello, I'm Stephanie Midori Komashin at Hokkaido University of Education, Asekawa. Today's flip is about producing a thesis statement. The thesis statement is the key for your whole paper. It's the most important point. So today we're going to focus on how do you go from the theme to narrowing, narrowing, narrowing down to themes that you can use? How do you go from that point to an actual strong thesis statement that follows all of the rules for thesis statements? We're going to look at that in detail today. First, we're going to review what we've learned in the previous flips about thesis statements. And then we're going to learn the difference between bad and so-so, not so great, and a better and good thesis statements so that you'll be able to avoid the bad type and produce the good type. And then we're going to move to a topic of when do you write the thesis statement? Where does it go in the paper? And when do you rewrite? When do you revise the thesis statement in the paper writing process? The stages in the paper writing process are at this point down to number three, producing a thesis statement. You might be feeling like, wow, we're still only on stage three, but please pay attention because this is really the most important, crucial point. If your thesis statement is weak, if it's not very good, the whole paper will not be very good. It's really the foundation that you need to use to build the whole paper. So we have to make sure that we are ready to get to stage three, and when we get here, that we can do it before we can move on. There's no use in writing anything until after the thesis statement is good. As you know, we can narrow the themes by many different ways, such as geography, source, relationship. As one example of English literature as the topic, it can be narrowed into themes by things like geography. We can narrow by British or by source. We can narrow by author. But even one author has many books, so we could narrow it to just one book by this author. And then within that, we can narrow even more. One book has many themes. We'll just choose one, which is relationships between four characters regarding intercultural understanding. And that's a way we can narrow from a very broad topic into something very specific. But even once we get to that point, we have to actually make the thesis statement and not fall apart or trip up at this point. From previous flips, you also know that the thesis statement is the ultimate conclusion of your paper. It must be true or false, and it is not a mere fact. It can be argued, and it must be argued. It's not well accepted and already believed by many people. We've also covered the rules for thesis statements. Be strong. Take a side. Always a statement, not a question, not a command. And using active voice, which is very important in order to be strong and take a side. Maybe you remember this chart from a previous flip. It showed the difference between a topic and a theme and thesis statement. That's all right. This one is a rating of six, but a thesis statement that's better at a rating of nine. And you also saw this second chart, which has the same topic versus theme versus thesis statement. This thesis statement has a rating of seven, but this one is better. It has a rating of nine. What we're doing today is we're going to go from your very narrowed theme into thesis statement and we want that thesis statement to get the most points, the highest score, or best results that you want out of your paper. Rather than go for the six or the seven or lower, we want to go for the best thesis statement because that is what's going to prepare your entire paper's quality. So let's look at an example. You saw in the previous flip this idea, a paper about vocabulary, learning methods. So 
If we just tried to write a paper about that, that would be way too broad. Here you can see a good way of narrowing. It has been narrowed with a theme of rest, and it has been narrowed with a specific application. One simple experiment. If you're doing your own experiment for your paper, then you definitely need to choose something that is doable, that is feasible, that is not too broad. So this has been sufficiently narrowed. But how do we make the thesis statement once we have narrowed the themes to this point? Let's take a look at some different examples, bad and better and good, from the same theme that is narrowed. So here it says a bad example. Taking a rest after 30 minutes of vocabulary learning followed by another 30 minutes of vocabulary learning is a popular method. What's wrong with this as a thesis statement? Well, one problem is it's a mere fact. Just it's a popular method. I think we can find that information in the world. There's no opinion about this. So even though it has been sufficiently narrowed, it's very narrow, it's great in that sense, but this is bad as a thesis statement because it's just a mere fact. We need to avoid mere facts. So let's look at another example. Taking a rest after 30 minutes of vocabulary learning followed by another 30 minutes of vocabulary learning is effective. Well, this is not just a mere fact. This does show the author's opinion. The author believes this is effective. So is effective, this is better than the previous example. But effective for what? How do you know it's effective? There's no argument, there's no data, just my opinion, it's effective. But how? Why? How do you know that information is not in the thesis statement? So this is not good as a thesis statement. Let's look at an improved version. Taking a 10 minute rest after 30 minutes of vocabulary learning followed by another 30 minutes of vocabulary learning is more effective for word memorization than not taking a rest. Okay, so I see now what it's effective for, memorization. So this is better. I can see the author's opinion and they're taking a side. It's more effective than no rest. But still, it's not very concrete. It's good in terms of opinion, but it, it's taken aside, it's got an opinion, but how can we test this? We need to test something more concrete. So here's a good version of the same topic. Taking a 10 minute rest after 30 minutes of vocabulary learning, followed by another 30 minutes of vocabulary learning improves word memorization by 10%. So this is a strong thesis statement that follows all of the rules for thesis statements because it can be argued and it must be argued. It's not a mere fact. It follows all of the rules. This is great because if you're going to conduct the experiment yourself, you can easily have two groups, one that studies for one hour with no break and one that studies with the 10 minute rest and you can compare it. It's simple, it's concrete, and you can report the research findings that you get. So why is it so important that we cannot use a mere fact? Well, actually, that's because Western academic writing must be interesting. Mere facts are simply not interesting. Of course, there might be some people who have a hobby about that thing, but in terms of an academic paper, we need to say something new, something original, something unique. Otherwise, there's no reason to write this paper. If someone else already said it, if other people already think it, and it's generally believed, generally accepted, then there's no point in writing the paper. So let's look at another new example. This is the idea of a paper of endangered species. Wow. There are so many species in the world that are endangered. That would be way too broad. So a good way would be to make a paper about whether or not institutions 
for example, nonprofit organizations or governmental organizations that manage marine resources in maritime countries, so countries that have oceans on their borders, should sign a treaty which imposes limits that prevent overfishing. So this is very concrete. It's about endangered species, but it has a strong opinion. It has added the theme of overfishing in order to narrow. It has also narrowed by source. We're only gonna look at information about these institutions, not about endangered species in general. And geography, only countries that are ocean bordered. And specific application, a treaty is the proposed solution. But even though we have narrowed it so much, it's still possible to make a bad thesis statement. So let's look at some different examples. First, the bad one. Overfishing can cause problems by depleting fisheries resources. Okay, I can see this is about endangered species with a the theme of overfishing. So it's become a little narrow, but this is a bad thesis statement. This cannot work as a thesis statement. Why? Because it says overfishing can cause problems. So it could, it might, but it's not so clear whether it does actually cause problems. It can, but maybe it won't. Can is not clear. By is a good word. By shows the reason. How does it do that? By depleting fisheries resources. But still, this is very vague. It's not specific. What kind of problems are caused by depleting fisheries resources? What are fisheries resources, more specifically? This is still too broad and too vague. So let's look at an improved version. This one's so-so. It would not earn you many points if you were turning in this paper for a grade, and it wouldn't help you be able to publish your paper in an academic journal or present it at a conference in Western countries, but it's better. Why? It says, Overfishing tuna causes problems by depleting fisheries resources. So, institutions that manage marine resources should prevent overfishing. So now we have an opinion. Overfishing tuna causes problems. Not it can cause problems, it does cause problems. That part is better. And how does it do it? By depleting the fisheries resources. So, so this so is very good. So is a great word to use in your thesis statement. Because it shows, here's the problem, so what should we do? What should happen to solve the problem? That's your strong opinion that will be useful in a thesis statement. So institutions that manage marine resources should prevent overfishing. Should also, an excellent word to put into your thesis statement. What should happen and why? This is your strong opinion that the reader wants to know. So this is better, but it still is missing something. It's still not concrete enough. Do you know why? So we still don't know what the problems are. And institutions that manage marine resources, there might be a lot of those institutions. That's still a lot of institutions to have to research about. And how should they prevent the overfishing? Maybe I can agree as the reader, oh yeah, maybe they should, but how should they do it? That is your job as the author. You should tell me what you think the solution is. Not just they should prevent it, but how can they do it? How should they do it? Now here is a good example. This is much more clear. Tuna is an endangered species due to overfishing. So, institutions that manage marine resources in maritime countries should sign a treaty which imposes limits that prevent overfishing. So, here we can see the author's opinion, strong, clear opinion, and why, and what should happen and who should do it. 
So we have a lot of narrowing here. Theme, overfishing, and tuna, source, institutions, but which ones? By geography, the maritime countries. And specific application is always good to use. In this case, treaty. What do you think should happen? All of those were about not a mere fact. We want to follow all the rules. Another important rule is can be argued. So can be argued means some things you might want to say, and they are interesting. They're not mere facts. However, it would be really difficult or take too much time or maybe even be impossible to prove. For example, I heard a great thesis statement, which was octopus are aliens. It's interesting. Most people don't agree. So we would not say it's a mere fact. But the problem is, how can you prove it? How can you do that research to check if it's true or not? So what we need is something that can be argued. Something that your readers do not already believe, but something that is doable, that is possible for you. You don't want to spend too much time researching in tons and tons of books and journal articles and websites. You don't have that much time. You need something that is specific enough that you can do it in a reasonable amount of limited time that you have. Something where you can find the answer, whether it's true or false, whether your hypothesis, your thesis statement of what should happen, whether that's true or not, you should be able to find out. So let's look at some examples. So as you saw in the previous flip, it would be bad to try to write a paper about education in all of Hokkaido, even if it's narrowed to English. But good would be to add the theme of ICT and by geography to remote schools. But even after we have narrowed it sufficiently, the next step is that you have to turn this narrowed topic into the thesis statement. So a good one would be, teachers in Hokkaido should use ICT to provide remote classroom instruction in order to increase the education level of remote schools and connect large schools with small schools. Very specific, you can see the author's opinion. And how should they do it? What should they do and why? So good use of words like should, to, and in order to. It's important that your thesis statement must be argued. It cannot be well accepted. It must be argued because most of the readers, people who would see your paper, don't already agree with you. That's what makes it interesting. So bad, as you saw in the previous flip, would be a paper just about types of education in Japan. There's many types and it's so broad. Trying to research all of them would be impossible. So a good paper would be about whether or not private international schools in Japan should become government-run schools. So if you just say, no, they should continue as they are, that is not very interesting. Maybe most people already think so. Oh yeah, they can continue as they are. But if you make a thesis statement like this, private international schools in Japan should be government-run international schools, then I think many of the teachers, principals, students, and parents of those students who currently attend the international schools, if they heard this thesis statement, they will be surprised, maybe shocked, maybe they will be against it, maybe even angry. What? Why should the international school change? It's a private school now. It should stay a private school, they might think. So this is great as a thesis statement because it takes a strong side. Most people would not already agree. And so simply by reading it, the strong thesis statement will hook the reader naturally. You don't have to use flowery language or try to be exciting in the first paragraph of your paper. To hook the reader, to get their attention, 
You just need a good, interesting, original thesis statement that will make them feel surprised. Here's an example. The Japanese government should hire girls and women between the ages of 18 to 25 as prostitutes to increase the number of Japanese babies by 75% by 2020. So this is a very shocking, surprising, unusual thesis statement. But that's why it's good. We don't mean good as in morally good. We mean good as this is the kind of thesis statement that will quickly grab the reader's attention and they know that you're going to try to convince them of something they don't already believe. They'll be interested to know what argument can you give. So in this case, the topic is Japan's falling birth rate. Alternately, we can call it Japan's aging population or childless Japan. In any case, whichever terms you use, it's the idea of the number of people in the population is decreasing. And what is a solution, a possible solution to that problem? So from the topic, then adding the theme of increasing the number of children of the Japanese babies who are born and a specific application using girls and women between the ages of 18 to 25 and the idea of prostitution. Now, of course, I'm not saying here that I'm in favor of prostitution. Just simply as an example, this is a great example of a thesis statement because it's so shocking and unusual. Immediately, we as the reader know that you're going to have to give a really good argument in order to convince someone that this would be the right solution. And so it will make it interesting to read. You don't have to write about something like this, but whatever your topic is, whatever your theme is, you want a thesis statement that will quickly grab the reader's attention because it is unique. So we have gone through all of the rules for thesis statements and how to turn your very narrowed theme or themes into a thesis statement. But now let's talk about where do we put the thesis statement in your paper? The thesis statement should be as brief as possible. Maybe one sentence. If needed, maybe two. But generally one is good. Just one sentence. And it must be in the first paragraph of your paper. It's possible that you might think the conclusion, ultimate conclusion of your paper should be at the end. Maybe you have heard about the structure of a Western paper, which has an introduction and a body and a conclusion. So maybe you would think that the thesis statement would go into the conclusion. But actually, it must be in the first paragraph inside of your introduction. Why? Because your professor or whoever is reading your paper is going to look for the thesis statement first. Before reading anything else, before paying attention to anything else in your paper, what the professor who will grade your paper or what the reader who will decide whether to agree with your paper, whether to publish your paper, whatever your goal is with the paper, in order to determine whether they agree, whether they like it, the reader is going to look for the thesis statement first. So if it's in the first paragraph of your paper, it's very easy, clear, and quick to find the thesis statement. And then the reader can happily, comfortably read the rest of the paper. If the thesis statement is not in the first paragraph, the reader feels uncomfortable, confused. What? I don't know where this paper is going. I don't understand what I'm supposed to pay attention to. They have no idea what your point is, unless you tell them in the beginning. Then they can feel confident, okay, it's an argument about this. Now I'll read the argument and see if I agree or not. But if they don't know what you're going to argue, it's really difficult to read the paper. And it's not a pleasant feel. So your professor or reader is going to look for the thesis statement first. Don't worry 
that you're giving away the punchline. Punchline means the ending, kind of like a surprise ending of a movie or a book. Of course, you don't want to give that away at the beginning, but an academic paper is not like a movie or book of fiction. An academic paper needs to be clear, so the thesis statement must be easy to find, easy to see quickly, right away. Don't worry about giving away your conclusion. After the reader knows what the conclusion is, then the reader can read the argument and be convinced. Oh, okay, yeah, actually, I, I understand. Actually, hmm, that's a good point. Actually, I agree by the time they finish the paper. But if they don't know the thesis statement at the beginning, they won't easily be convinced. Your professor is going to, or your reader, is going to repeat it constantly throughout the paper. As they read, they're going to think about your thesis statement. And everything that you say, they're going to pay attention. Does this support the thesis statement? Does it prove the thesis statement? Or is it off topic? It shouldn't even be here in the paper because it's not related to the thesis statement. Your reader is going to do that the entire time. So you need to make sure that your thesis statement is easy for them to find and that the contents all support your thesis statement. So next, when do we write the thesis statement? Well, as you know, we are in stage three of the paper writing process. So this is the first time that we write the thesis statement. So before you start to research for your paper, you need to guess, you need to predict, or at least you need to give your opinion what you think should happen or should be true. So you're going to maybe have a question you want to research. We could call it a research question, but you need to think of what answer you expect. What do you anticipate is the answer to the question that you're asking? And that will be your thesis statement. In other words, we can say a hypothesis, not just I'm going to do an experiment and check if this is true or this is not true. You have to have an idea which one do you think will be true? Which do you expect will be true? Of course, we don't know for sure yet. That's why we will experiment. Or if you're not doing an experiment, maybe you have a theory that if I read these things, these sources, I'm going to find this kind of evidence. Of course, you don't know yet what you will find, but you can guess what you expect you're going to find. Or if it's your opinion about a solution to a problem, it's basically what you expect will be the best solution. Maybe when you research, you will find a different solution that you didn't think of yet. But to start with, you need at least one clear idea of what you're trying to find. When you have the thesis statement, then it can help guide your research. So for example, when I'm researching, I like to read many books, articles, websites, but there's too many. And I don't have the time to read all of every one of them. But if I know what I'm looking for before I start reading, then when I open a book, and I see oh, this chapter, it's not related to my thesis statement. I don't need to read that chapter. Oh, this chapter, maybe I need to read it. And this chapter, definitely I need to read it. If I know my thesis statement, then I know which part of the book I need to read or which journal articles I need to read and which I don't need to read. You don't need to read everything. It's impossible to read everything. So it's important to read the parts that you need. If you have a thesis statement, you can find which parts you need to look for. So in my own research, I have a few things that I know I'm looking for. So it doesn't matter which book or movie or like documentary film or a website. It doesn't matter what I'm looking at. I'm always looking for these three things because these are for my thesis statement. If I didn't know my thesis statement, I would be reading so many more things that actually won't be used in the paper. It's not that that information is not useful for anything. Of course, there's lots of great information and facts that are very interesting in the world, but 
If they don't relate to your thesis statement, you don't need to read them in order to write your thesis statement. There's already enough material just to write your thesis statement. You don't need to read everything else. At this point in the paper writing process, it's okay if you don't know if your thesis statement is correct or not correct. It's just your guess. It's just your prediction or your opinion about the best solution to a problem. It's okay if it turns out that that was not true. That's why you're going to research it. But you have to at least pinpoint what you think, and then you can check when you research if it's true or not true. If you haven't given your prediction or your opinion, then you have no way to check if it is correct or not correct. That's why it's important that we have to write the thesis statement in stage three before starting the research on the topic. In stage four of the paper writing process, which is developing the argument for the thesis statement, that is when we're going to relook at the thesis statement. So during a research, after you have your thesis statement, you know what to look for in the books, you start to read. And then when you're reading, you look for the facts that match your thesis statement or facts that don't match. Maybe you had one opinion, but you are looking for it and then you see, ah, actually, this fact is opposite of what I thought. Oh, okay, but that's fine. You find what supports your thesis statement, what shows that it's correct, and you find what shows that it's false. And maybe part of your thesis statement is true and part of it's false. That's fine. What we're going to do in the next stage, stage four, developing the argument for the thesis statement, is to sift, sort. Okay, this information tells me my thesis statement is true in these areas. But I also found this information which shows one part of my thesis statement was not correct, it was false. So in that case, you would need to revise. You'd need to edit, to change, to fix your thesis statement, to match the actual facts that you find. You need it to start with so that you know what to look for. When you look for the information, you may find that your thesis statement was completely true and correct, and that's great, then you don't need to change anything. But maybe you'll find something was different than you expected, and then you can change it in stage four. So keep an open mind. It means don't be so set, don't be so attached and committed to your thesis statement that you would not possibly change it, no matter what the facts say. When you do the research, you might find out it was right, but you might find out it was wrong, or you might find out part of it was right and part of it was wrong. So keep an open mind. You may need to adjust. In my own research, this has happened. I had an idea, or based on the information I had so far, I thought this will be true, so I made my thesis statement. But then I found some new, completely new data that I never saw before, and I realized, oh, this group also exists? I thought there was only two groups. Actually, there's three groups. I need to change my thesis statement. So it says, ah, oh, there's three groups. So in that case, I revised. That's perfectly normal. It may be you don't need to revise, but maybe you will. At this point, the thesis statement is still to help you keep your focus. The more that you learn about the topic and themes, the more you'll be able to understand if your thesis statement needs to change, needs to adapt. So here's an example. This is an excellent thesis statement. It is very narrow from the topic of university education, adding the theme of finances, a source of JASO, J-A-S-S-O, comparison relationship between students in Hokkaido and students in Tokyo, and specific application of minimum wage. So it has been narrowed in many ways. It's a very good thesis statement. It says, Hokkaido's minimum wage should be 146 yen higher so that Hokkaido students on scholarships from JASO, whose parents earn less 
than Tokyo students' parents do, can afford higher education. Very specific, the author's opinion is very clear what should happen to solve the problem. So it has followed all the rules for thesis statements. It's great. Then the author would start to research and actually find out, ah, changing the minimum wage would not solve the problem. Ah, okay, well, this was a good thesis statement and most of it is still good, but maybe minimum wage is not the solution when you study all of the materials, all of the facts that you have. When you look at the data, you might need to change. So here in this example, to remove Hokkaido's minimum wage should be 146 yen higher. So instead of that idea, the problem is still true. The focus of Hokkaido students versus Tokyo students is still applicable, but a different solution from the data that the author found. So instead of change the minimum wage, a different solution. The Japanese government should discount rent for students who go from Hokkaido to higher education institutions in Tokyo. So for students from Hokkaido who go to study in Honshu, the rent is more expensive in Tokyo. Maybe their families cannot afford it. So the Japanese government should discount their rent for the Tokyo apartment or dormitory. So this is an excellent thesis statement. It's a very specific. It has been narrowed and it shows the author's opinion of what should happen. What is the problem and what is the solution? So in this case, we can see a change. Here, there was a thesis statement about minimum wage is the answer. But then after doing some research, oh, actually minimum wage, maybe it won't solve the problem for this, this, and this reason that I found in the journal article. So instead, I also found this article, which had an idea about rent subsidies. So let's change the specific application. Instead of minimum wage, change the specific application to government subsidy and rent. Then we can change, we can adapt, we can edit and upgrade the thesis statement into something that is more accurate to the facts in the world that you found when you did the research. This is also normal. You may not need to change your thesis statement at all, but maybe when you do the research, you will need to change it, and that is perfectly fine. When you're almost finished with your research, actually, it's time to check your thesis statement again. You need to think about whether you need to make any changes to your thesis statement based on the information that you found during your research. So now you know things about this topic, themes, and the thesis statement you didn't know before you wrote the thesis statement. You've accumulated new knowledge, you've found new data, so now you know many things you didn't know before. Maybe you need to change the thesis statement based on what you found, or maybe you just decide you want to switch your focus. Within your narrow theme, you found a different part that was really interesting to you. Or maybe you had narrowed as much as you could, but then when you started your research, you realized it can go even narrower than you knew before. So you can refine, you can make your thesis statement even narrower than you did in the beginning. Or maybe you realized suddenly an idea before you didn't think of it, but after you read some, after you did some research and you found new information, suddenly the idea came to your mind. And then you want to write about that as the solution instead of your previous solution. So you might want to change it. You might want to narrow the theme. You might want to switch your focus. That is perfectly fine. And then there's one more time we need to think about your thesis statement. This is in stage seven and stage eight of the paper writing process. Stage seven is revising the introduction and the conclusion. As I said earlier, 
Your thesis statement is your ultimate conclusion, and it is found in the first paragraph of the paper. That's in your introduction. So in stage seven, you need to revise your introduction and conclusion. So it's time to reconsider, recheck if your thesis statement is fine. Then in stage eight, when you're editing the paper, it's also the time just to make sure everything matches. So after you finish writing your paper, it's important that all of the contents, all of the arguments, the premises and conclusions you wrote throughout your paper all prove and support your thesis statement. It's important that there's no information that you added into the body of the paper that is not related to your thesis statement. All of it must be part of the proofs, the arguments for your statement, for your conclusion. So, you need to check if they all prove it. Maybe you said something in the thesis statement as a promise to the reader, and then actually you didn't write about it anywhere. If you didn't write about it in the contents, you need to write that argument and put it into your paper. Or maybe you made an argument in your paper, but you didn't write about it in the thesis statement. Maybe it's a new idea. So actually, we can't put in new ideas that are not part of the thesis statement. So if you have something new that's very important, then you need to revise the thesis statement to include this information. And maybe you ran out of time. Maybe you had a plan to cover multiple things, but some of the books you wanted you couldn't access, or maybe you just didn't have enough time to finish reading or finish uh, the next step of the experiment you wanted to do, you only have some of the data that you hope to get, that's okay. Then you just need to change the thesis statement. Because maybe in the thesis statement, you promised something to the reader. And then when you wrote the paper, you didn't have enough time to find that information. Maybe you just couldn't find it. Maybe it would have been too expensive to get a hold of that book, or it would have taken too much time to get a hold of it before your deadline, you couldn't possibly arrange it, that happens. So in that case, you need to remove it from your thesis statement. Everything in the thesis statement has to be in the premises somewhere. If there's something you said in your ultimate conclusion that's not in the premises, then you have to remove it. You cannot use it in the thesis statement. In other words, the premises and the conclusions must all go into your ultimate conclusion. If they change during the process of the paper writing, then the thesis statement also needs to be checked at the end to make sure it's still accurate to the contents that you wrote. Of course, we'll resume these ideas when we get to that point in the paper writing process. But for now, I hope that you have been able to understand how to go from your very narrow theme into producing the thesis statement that follows all of the rules and how to avoid the bad, poor, low-level thesis statements, and even how to avoid the so-so or better ones in order to write a good thesis statement that can earn you many points in your course grade or can help you to publish or help you to give a presentation or help you in whatever goals you have for your academic writing. Thank you very much and I'll see you next time.